Hey, welcome back to the Mitch Ball Grid. My name is Andre. Thanks so much for tuning in. Today we have a new startup deck, and this is Reflecting Pool, a Jinteki Personal Evolution Trap Kill deck, of course, within the startup format. So this might actually be a real treat for those who haven't experienced or played this sort of archetype itself, because it does something very different than a lot of Netrunner decks you might have been playing to date. This is not a deck that wants to take ice, build a remote server, and protect agendas and score them out. This is a deck where you take your three-pointer agenda, you install it into a new, brand new unice remote server, and you say advance, advance, go. And you see what your opponent's going to do. The idea behind these sort of decks, these Jinteki, what they're classically called Cambridge shell game type Jinteki decks, is that they want to have a mixture of agendas and assets that if the runner accesses them, they're ambushes that will hurt the runner. And they're basically asking the runner to discern which cards in the remote servers are real agendas and which are the cards that are going to hurt them. So that's what we're doing here in Startup. So firstly, as an identity, we're playing Personal Evolution. The way that we're winning is generally not scoring to seven points, but this is a really important ability that gives a net damage every time we score an agenda, which we can do more damage off scoring multiple agendas or when the runner steals agendas. So if the runner's running off of R&D or HQ and steals some agendas, they take more damage, they end their turn with less cards in hand, and that's perfect for our game plan. And a big part of this deck is the agendas. A lot of these agendas work really well for what we're trying to do. Let's start with some of the small ones. We have three House of Knives in the deck as three one agendas. This deck runs way more agendas than most other decks. And the idea is that if the runner has to steal a lot of one pointers, they're going to take a lot of damage from the personal evolution ability. House of Knives, you just install into your new remote server. Hopefully the runner doesn't run it. They think it's a snare or something else. And you score this out. This does a damage on score and it does three more damage throughout runs. And our deck is very capable of bursting the runner, uh, flatlining a runner that has three or four cards in hand. So making sure that they have less cards in hand after they've ran sets up that really well. This is four net damage on a single card. We also have three sting, which has text that continues to confuse me, but when scored or stolen, it can do a huge burst of damage based off of how many copies of the card are in your opponent's score area. So if they steal some early, no big deal. They're going to take some net damage. And then the final one you score has a chance to flatline the opponent or the opposite. A lot of the times, and you'll see this in the video, I'll install advanced advances in remote servers and leave them there until I score them out to make a surprise lethal once a sting enters the runner's score area. On top of that, we have two false leads. I like this a lot. This card classically didn't show up in too many Jinteki uh, sort of these trap decks back in the day, but I like this 3-1 agenda. It's something that you score out and then ideally you can make it really awkward from when the runner is running. If they run first click or second click and hit a snare and take three net damage, maybe they only have two cards in their hand. This is where you forfeit the false lead, end their turn, and then you have some amount of things on the table that can do more than two cards worth of damage. This card has been really important. It has a huge impact on the game when it's scored out. And then finally, we have some of the bigger agendas. This is a new card. And mind you, we're playing with a lot of the new cards, testing them out from Midnight Sun. Blood in the Water is starts as a 5-2 agenda, but it's an X2, in fact. Uh, X is equal to the number of cards in the runner's grip. So if the runner ends their turn on one card in the grip, you can install advance, do an net damage, maybe even install another Blood in the Water and score that out. Because if they have no cards in hand, this becomes a flat line. Install immediately score is very, very, very strong. And if you ever can get the runner down to no cards in hand, this is a uh, lethal, as long as you have one click to at least install it. And then finally, we're playing Vulnerability Audit. A big agenda. It's a 4-3 agenda with basically no relevant text. And the idea with this is that we do install advance advance in a remote server. And the next turn, we can do advance advance score and then hopefully play a card like Neurospike. Again, this deck does not protect agendas with ice or upgrades. You're going to have to sweat it out by putting agendas into remote servers and leaving them there. It's really scary when you have a three point agenda that you can score out, but a lot of times you don't want to score out. Again, with this deck, you don't generally want to score to seven points. You want to flatline the runner. So if you install advanced advance your vulnerability audit and the runner doesn't run it, you generally leave it. Because later on in the game, you might be able to score this out quickly and then do double Nero Spike, which, mind you, that's a lot of damage. That's like seven damage. That's incredible. Now, if we go through the assets, we have a lot of assets. Um, let's start with the big traps. Cerebral Overrider. It's one of the big reasons why runners are scared of the naked install advance advance and remote server. This does core damage as long as you have three credits. And core damage changes the entire game. When the runner can only end their turn on three cards in hand, the things on the table become very, very much more lethal. We also have Clearing House for a fair bit more influence. Um, 
I'm not sure what the balance should be between clearing houses and some of the other traps, but this is a card again that if the runner doesn't run and doesn't want to risk interacting with the traps, you can do two meat damage potentially off the top of the turn, obviously more, and then that makes it easier for you to kill the runner or flatline the runner with other cards like Ronin or some of the Neural Spike stuff. Talking about Ronin, this is another Ronin, another card that you need to run. If you do not run the Ronin, this can be a click, if, as long as it's heavily advanced, for three net damage. Uh, very easily, you can do Clearing House into Ronin into uh, Blood in the Water. And again, damage comes out of nowhere if they don't run the wrong or the right thing. And speaking of the wrong thing, Urtica Cypher on its own now, as an unadvanceable trap, it's not too bad. Two net damage if they run it. But if you do install advance advance, this becomes a four net damage card on top of your other tricks. And that becomes quite scary and can set up potentially the lethal from there. In terms of other stuff, we have three spin doctor, classic card draw recursion, super important. We have three snare, which is so important in this deck that you're always holding on to at least four credits if you can. Because if the runner runs central servers, four net damage or four credits for three net damage and a tag, mind you, is a lot. And that does... Uh, that's a big surprise. It makes multi-axis very scary, and a lot of times the runner hits a snare, and then next turn uh, you can flatline them. Otherwise, we have some new stuff, and I'm actually not a big fan of these cards. We have two copies of Bladder Word, and I really don't understand this card. Uh, we'll get to this in a second, but the deck has a very uh, strong problem with economy. That uh, Generally, these sort of archetypes weren't flush with credits, and this deck is probably even worse than some of the older versions. But Bladder Word represents uh, some cheeky net damage. Maybe you don't res it until surprise. It does a single net damage, but otherwise it's a pad campaign. The issue with this sort of deck is that it's not generally taxing out runners' credits, so trashing this for three credits and a click shouldn't be a really big deal. This deck does not move particularly quickly, and so I don't think runners should be leaving this up. I have played games in which runners have left this up, but I think that's 100% a mistake, and I don't really like this card in this sort of deck. There's no way for you to protect it. If you do protect it, it's no longer an economy card, and it's quite rough. At least we're on low credits, so the net damage fires somewhat consistently if they let it. And then finally, we have two copies of Moonpool, and this card seemed very exciting when I start brew started brewing this deck. Three credits gives you a ridiculous ability to, at instant speed, put agenda counters on a card. And again, at instant speed means if the runner chooses to access the Cerebral Overrider before, once they've committed to the access, before the run is successful, you can actually res your um, Blood in the Water, or sorry, your Moonpool, and use the Moonpool ability to move two counters, and maybe they died in Urtica Cypher. Maybe they take four core damage. But my biggest problem with this card, not only is it quite expensive, is that a lot of times this deck does not want to hold agendas in hand. If we draw a mid of the one point agendas, we generally just kind of windmill them down onto the table. The only agenda we ever largely keep in our hand for more than one turn is Blood in the Water. But as soon as you throw that Blood of the Water back into your deck with the Moon Pool, you generally lose one of your very powerful cards that can end the game if the runner ends on low or no cards in hand. So I don't actually quite like this. I think this should not really be in the deck unless maybe we play radically different and keep the one pointers in hand. But I'm not a big fan of that. Maybe you can keep a sting or two. That's largely the assets, the operations. We have three hedge fund for economy. We have three neuro spike to be able to leave agendas on the table and then score it and do big amounts of damage. And then finally, we have, I think, the best new card for this archetype in Midnight Sun by a mile, Mitosis. This card for three credits and two clicks allows you to put two cards onto the table. They have to be in new servers and two advancements on each of them. So that's technically a massive saving of credits and clicks. And then with two cards on the table, the runner really has to make the right choice. There are situations where you might toss this out a Ronin and a clearing house. And if the runner doesn't run that, you can do five damage next turn without any sort of interaction on their behalf. So this is really important that you put multiple traps on the table because a single install advance advance card on the, on the table won't lose the runner of the game unless they really, I think, misplay and play a bit too aggressively. But two cards means things are quite interesting. Mitosis is amazing. When it comes to the ice, really quickly, we have a Palisade. Oh, this I don't like at all. And I cut this pretty quickly to put more economy into this deck. This is kind of an issue with startup is that Jinteki only has a single barrier in the entire format. So if you want to play Ivic for largely seven credits, maybe four credits if we res every single code gate in the list, that's all we have without spending influence. And there are good low influence barriers, but this deck generally doesn't want to uh, gear check. It's not looking to install breakers. I just originally put in a single Palisade as our only neutral barrier, just so that if we do net damage away a fractor maybe the runner struggles but i don't think that's a real uh thing that's worth pursuing otherwise we have three engram plush this card is just very 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 good it's five strengths two very good subroutines for only two cost is way above curve mind you this card is banned in standard for being too good in startup you're allowed to play with it and why not it works perfectly with our archetype 
And then we play a lot of sentries. Anemone is so strong again in this archetype. If you have a house of knives or two, the runner runs, even if they have their killer, you can suddenly do two to four net damage and that can set up the lethal in the following turn. Very, very powerful card. And finally, Sight and Tan. This is the card that the runners have to respect. You cannot face check into this deck without a sentry or an AI. Uh, by sentry, I mean a killer, because this can suddenly do three to six net damage, and that can be game losing. So watch out. Once this is rezzed, it's not too expensive to break. A lot of people are on Begalter and Chesva, so it has a bit of a shelf life, but we're not running a lot of ice. So you just put these on central servers to maybe buy yourself a couple turns. And that is the list. There are some large problems with this list. The biggest thing is economy, and I do not know how to solve that. The old Jinteki decks used to click for credits a lot. They had classically a 3-1 agenda called Gila Hands Arcology. That was like a, an economy agenda, but we don't have anything like this. So you're going to spend a lot of turns clicking for credits and making sure you're over four. There are some economy cards you can add to this list. I think Hansei Review is the easiest one. I did cut the Palisade, and I think I cut a Moon Pool to put two Hansei Reviews by the end of all my gameplay, and this card is still kind of expensive and hard to play. Trashing cards from your hand, not easy. We don't have too much recursion, so I don't love it. And the other very easy option is also Celebrity Gift, but I detest this card. I think it's interesting in some board states to be able to show your hand and see like, oh, there's an agenda, but two snares. Do you really want to run? And there's a lot of money on this card, but I now really dislike showing the runner when we have the blood and the waters in our hand that are uh, kind of a liability. Two points is a lot for a single agenda in this deck. And that's kind of the issue. You'll see the gameplay. We have some very exciting lethals, but I do think there are some changes we'd have to make to this deck. I think the biggest thing that's actually really exciting me to keep reiterating on this sort of thing is Seamless Launch. This is something I didn't really consider, and I think it's actually really, really important for the deck. Not only is it a soft economy card, but it works really well with what we're trying to do. If you install Double Advance in the remote server, say a vulnerability audit, and the runner doesn't run it, now you can do Seamless Launch, Score, Neuro Spike, Neuro Spike. So often we were hamstrung and you'll see in the games by not having enough clicks to deliver the lethal combo that we were holding in our hand. And being able to save clicks and credits with Seamless Launch seems so good. It works really well with, with Ronin. It works really well with uh, the agendas. And I think that's possibly something worth considering. Maybe you drop a clearing house, find some more influence, figure that out. And in fact, this deck is very similar to an original deck I was running just before Midnight Sun came out. This is our start of Cambridge PE. You can tell it's very, very close. I think we're running a couple worse agendas because Blood in the Water is not out. The operation package is a bit different, but that's the basis of it. And if you want to see more gameplay of this, there is a video up on the channel. It'll be linked down there and probably above my head where we're playing some startup uh, uh, PE. I think one of the big differences is in the modern list here, I tried to play some of the cards, the newer cards, mind you, from uh, Midnight Sun and Moonpool and Bladderwort, the two new of the four new cards we're playing, I would cut from the list very quickly. I think back in the day, uh, our old version was playing Trick of Light as a pseudo influence list, seamless launch, and I like that a heck of a lot more. I think the last thing I want to say about this archetype is while Midnight Sun gave Jinteki Trap Decks a lot of tools with Mitosis and Blood in the Water, I think equally, if not more, the startup runners got more tech to deal with this sort of archetype. And that's actually been really frustrating. You can see a lot of matchups where we're playing against Criminals, and I think Criminals is our best matchup by a mile, but the Anarch matchup is quite difficult now, and the Shaper matchup is largely kind of unwinnable if they play correctly. Anarchs recently got cards like Marrow, of course, uh, if you're playing Essa, you have huge hand size. You don't have to take a lot of core damage. Just huge hand size will do it. And of course, Light the Fire, another Essa specific card to deal with the remote server. But I think the biggest deal by a mile is Steel Skin Scarring. I would not play an Anarch deck without three of these in startup or standard. And with this in hand, it is very, very difficult to ensure that you can get a lethal combo because you don't know if when you score your agenda before your Neuro Spike, whether it's going to hit the Steel Skin and everything is now for nothing. So very, very difficult to deal with that. On the Shaper side, if you just have a Stone Ship chart room, you're basically unkillable. Uh, as long as you keep this and use it uh, like intelligently, uh, that's kind of it, right? Like it's very hard to deal with this, let alone some of the other cards like Anacom are still seeing quite good play, even in Criminal. And of course, even Lat, we had to deal with once or twice. So that can be quite hard. So I find it to be a bit discouraging in some ways. I think proper play with good tech makes this deck unwinnable, but I do think it's a very exciting deck. We have some very exciting games. And if this is not an archetype that you've tried or explored before, I highly recommend trying it out because it's something very unique in Netrunner and delivers something that is wildly different than what you might have learned. With that out of the way, the games are coming right up. Hopefully you enjoy. Hey, welcome back to Metropolitan Grid.
Today we're playing some startup and we're playing a uh, personal evolution trap deck. There's a bunch of like Jinteki tricky trapsy cards that were recently uh, came out in Midnight Sun. Thanks, you too. We're playing against Sable who wants to be pretty aggressive. If it's a deep dive deck, we really want to keep damage in hand, like things like snares. We want to keep, um, uh, what do we have, anemone, stuff like that. Our opening hand is really good that has double mitosis, but we don't have any ice to keep out Sable. Um, so we're going to mulligan this. We also have this 4-3 agenda, which is a bit of a vulnerability, um, as the name implies. But hey, this is pretty good too. All right, and we're against an opponent with no name, which apparently is a thing you can do. Cool. So we definitely want to ice up. Uh, we don't know what the mark is going to be on Sable. or personal evolution that says that whenever an agenda is scored or stolen, we get to do one net damage, which is sick. Um, I don't want to mitosis on the board right now because I want to have two things to be able to mitosis. We have some trashables in HQ. Our deck has a lot of trashable assets, especially these like traps that don't do anything unless they get advancement counters on them. So we don't generally want to protect that up. I would consider putting Spin Doctor on the table and drawing, but I don't really want to discard any of these cards. So I'm just going to ice up HQ and click for credits. I'm assuming there might be a bit more HQ pressure than R&D pressure from Sable, but regardless, if she wants a deep dive, she has to get through everything. Archives mark here is huge. Uh, she's not going to get a clickless runoff of R&D, but we can still Carpe Diem or Clicksley Dirty Laundry. There's a lot of ways to get value here. Arthritis Hotel, there's a Carpe Diem, just three credits for free on Archives. It's a click back. Pretty good. Yeah. So if we draw into something like that, that's actually really nice here. Uh, we could, considering mitosising into the two of these, I'm going to go ahead and do it. So mitosis says you can pick two cards, they go into new remote servers, and they put two advancements on each of them. We want to keep our money up always for three credits, because if you have three credits, you're tra threatening core damage with three overrider. But I'm not actually sure. We, it's, it's a really important thing to get a read on your opponent to know what they're going to run and what they're not going to run. So I'm just going to click for a credit here and try and test the waters. If they run either of these, it's like a mixed bag. We definitely want to get the house of knives, and we want to keep the other one, the clearing house, on the table, uh, just so they ever, ever end their... Uh, their um, the turn with low cards in hand, we can pop this, do a bit of damage, and then uh, end up like maybe even winning the game with the blood in the water. So they're running here, the clearing house. They put down their cat's cradle because they didn't want to lose that to damage. That's pretty cool. Clearing house is going to come down for three credits, I imagine. And at this point, now that they saw one of these cards is not an agenda, like usually people put a trap and then something else. So again, we're going to figure out whether our opponent runs this or not. It looks like they haven't which is fantastic. We got the overrider off the top. So I'm going to go advance score. We want to play in the rest of our turn, though. Because you don't always have to score these things off the table. I think there's some agendas you actually do want to brew on the table, but I think this one we definitely want to score because it has an ongoing ability. I think probably here we're just going to click for credits. Oh, we had a deep dive at hand. Pretty good to get this down early just to make sure the deep dives don't. Uh, it's harder to deep dive. We're going to have to res this thing for three credits. I'm just going to click for two credits here. Unfortunately, if we res this thing for three credits because Cat's Cradle increases the cost, the res cost of code gates, uh, we're not going to be able to afford our snare in hand. So we'll see how it goes. They draw up clicklessly with Earthrise. That's their second sure gamble. Mark is HQ, so they could consider running here. I think we'd rather res the Ingram Flush. Dream Nuts are actually really powerful in this matchup because it stops them from, uh, it gets free card draw while they check traps, right? It's this sort of click compression where a lot of times in Jinteki, you want to have enough cards in hand and run at the same time. So here we get double advance of Cerebral Overrider. It's not amazing. Um, it's going to be very expensive. I'm just going to try and spin Doctor in. We don't have a lot of Econ in this deck. I'd love to draw. Ooh, that's actually really good too. I would love to draw into... Um, I was going to say like a hedge fund or a bladder word, something like that. I think next turn we have a really nice setup with the mitosis here. We get mitosis, a clearinghouse, and a cerebral or a false lead and a cerebral. I think that's quite nice. Here we're probably going to discard a card. I think we're likely going to discard a card here. So I'm just going to click for two credits because if we do the mitosis, we'll be down to three credits, which means we're not threatening snare, which is a bit of a bummer. You always want to be threatening snare, I think. So I'm going to throw out the yeah, neuro spike. Uh, it's a very powerful card. We don't have any big agendas in our hand that are really threatening this. Excuse me. But this is very potentially powerful with cards like Blood in the Water and our Vulnerability Audits. It could be a big deal. All right, we're running R&D here. Uh, sometimes if you're going to pop Spin Doctor, sometimes it's good to pop it earlier than later so they don't run R&D, run Spin Doctor, shuffle, run R&D again. But we're not planning to do that. They use the Chesva credits to trash an Urtica Cypher. Oh, man, that's the first time I've seen the interaction. Usually it's for breakers, but that's very good. That's two credits of value this turn. Carpe Diem. Just getting the money and a second chess is coming down. All right. Oh, we could have considered House of Knives things. I need to remember this. I think at that point, we probably wouldn't want it to do it, but we'll definitely consider it going forward. So if we get the false lead scored, we can make things a bit awkward for our opponent. Again, they have a really good dream uh, net click compression. So I think here we can go ahead and just put two non-wins on the table. We can either continue to advance these or click for credit. I'm going to click for credit again, because that's sort of the issue. If we pay for the, the cerebral overrider, uh, we're going to be down to three credits. So. Oh, hey, that's a cerebral overrider. We'll take it. 
So they draw a card, we'll pay three. That's gonna do two core damage. So a permanent reduction of the hand size is very, very meaningful for this game. They're gonna start their turn with three cards in hand. <laughs> Mind you, class is gonna draw back up to four. So I don't think we're gonna land a clearinghouse this turn. And we could have considered House of Knivesing, but again, I want a House of Knives when they have less cards in hand. I think they had extra. We're gonna do damage anyways. So here they need to either install a card or discard a card. And it's a bit dodgy to run last click. They're not getting their Chesve value, but um, we couldn't fire Snare, so I think it's quite fine. So now we need to remember that we always have this that can do two damage, and sometimes can do four damage if we um get a, what's it called, onto the table. What is it called? A moon pool on the table, which helps a lot with this deck. It does a lot, moon pool. But mind you, I think the biggest issue right now with our deck is our economy is like really poor. I took out, I used to have Hante reviews and uh, celebrity gifts in this deck, and I ended up taking those out and put in bladder words instead, which I think might be wrong. We definitely also want an ice for RD. I'm going to just draw and click for two credits. This is something that's definitely good to get on centrals, but it's three credits to res, and eventually they're breaking it for what? It's four for strength, two for subroutines. It's only two credits. Uh, security testing. Pretty good. They're going to go ahead and actually trash this clearing house. With six cards in hand, I'm not too excited to house the knives. We want to keep those for the runs that it looks like they're deep diving. Security testing allows them to mark a server. They're actually just accessing this. It's a clearing house, so they can trash that for all their money, which is going to be a bit awkward this turn. But hey, that saves them from taking two damage. So that's two clearing houses down. Central server, they have four credits to trash with. We have snare money. They have seven cards in hand and only zero credits. So they're going to be discarding some cards. Undo click. Oh, I think they actually want to trash a card they saw because I think they realized, I forgot that they have chest of credits. So it's probably something that has cost on it. The fact that they're trashing cards while the spin doctor is up is like a bit, I think, unoptimal. Generally, you want to throw in the spin doctor first because now we can go ahead and bring that bladder word back into our deck if we really wanted to. They just trashed that for three credits. They're going back in against Snare. Last click here would be a bit good, but they have extra cards in hand. Oh no. Ooh, that's not good. Took a class act out of hand because of damage. They have to discard down to three. Oh, one more run here. Okay, nothing. All right, we have two of these. It's pretty scary. It seems like they're running the things that we did install double advance on the table, which is good to know. All right, they discarded a pan weave, another cat's cradle, and a bravado. Okay. So we have a palisade. We don't generally want to put that on central servers. Um, here though, they're pretty low on credits. They're going to get two credits generally clicklessly with security testing two to three times. So we could consider just doing like a house of knives into a remote server with a palisade. Uh, probably eats like a boomerang or an inside job. I don't think we mind too much. As soon as they get this though, they're technically on, on game point because there's one more three pointer in the deck. So we could also install both of these. They don't have like, they have a bit, they, like the clickless card draw is so good, especially with the filtered class act dream net combo. I, I'm a big fan of that. We're going to have to ice up R&D. I think we're just going to ice up R&D, click for credits. Like, we do need to res this stuff. We can't let them run R&D and trash things clicklessly. So many of our cards have very low numbers in the corner and are useless in R&D, but do something in the remote server. Okay, archives is clicklessly two credits. Pretty good. Security testing means they won't flip archives. They won't actually um, get any value from that besides the two credits. Mind you, that's still really good. And they get the dream net draw, so not too bad at all. We want to ice up archives sooner than later. Okay, a neurospike. Not looking great. I think we can consider putting these two on the table and I would ice up maybe one of them. The House of Knives seems like it's maybe worth icing up. We can do install, install credit. I don't mind that. I'm like kind of a coward for putting snares in remote servers. I generally like them to be in HQ because eventually they will run HQ. But if they don't run them in the remote server, like I feel like the unadvanced threats are way weaker than advanced threats. Archives, that's clicklessly two credits on card draw, super good value. We can get some sort of cheap ice here, it'd be fantastic. I don't know what their fractor is. Uh, the Palisade generally you want on a remote server. This is the only barrier in the deck. Just so that we have something that if we end up net damaging the net damaging away um a fractor, we have a, a play. There's the Begalter. At this point, I think they're actually going to consider running. Because a lot of times they don't want to beef it into like a three credit uh or three net damage um bathonomous or like a Sysenton. So I think they're gonna be a bit more comfortable face checking next turn. All right, we have a moon pool. Doesn't really do anything for the sand, so we can score one of these. It's either the false lead or the house of knives. I feel like the house of knives is a bit more impactful. We hit a twinning. Wow, three influence. Makes a lot of sense. But now any run, we can threaten two net damage. Immediately they'll draw one from the dream net. But it's not like in, in startup we have Obakata protocol. Mind you, a 5-3 agenda that requires four net damage to steal. So I don't know. I feel like we can just give them one damage here. Okay, that's another security testing. Not too impactful. False lead is also very interesting because if they end their their second click with low uh, cards in hand, we can like double on a run, right? We potentially can double house on knives. And then um, I don't think we're resing here. No, we're not going to res. That's all our money. If they hit the snare, it's 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 more impactful. Like in theory here, if we house of knives them and they hit a snare, they lose. Like they shouldn't access here. That's a Ronin. 
They could have lost right there. Right? Because snare, we had the credits. So I don't know if you take that access, especially because it's been many turns. We very likely have a snare in hand here. Oh, Hedgehog's perfect. I was thinking scoring out the false lead. They only have 20 more cards in their deck. We don't want to like grind them out. And while we, if we ice up archives, like they can still security testing a different central server. They'll have to like spend the click on it, but their money is now quite good. We can draw once, I think. Okay, let's get some money. And less cards in hands means more likely to hit a snare. We also like, they have to watch out because if they ever run with only, uh, what is it? Uh, three cards in hand, like they could run into an enemy. We could discard, do house and knives, house and knives, and they'll die. So it's actually quite hard when they're on this few uh, cards in hand. We have three enemies in the list. We just have to get them. So we're never going to use the last tokens off these house of knives. But if we can set up something cool like a blood in the water. Oh, penny shaver is good. That makes it a three credit run. Yeah, we can we can set up some lethals here, but we just have to wait a bit. We have to brew something up. We'll score the false lead if we can. The fact that like a lot of times you can leave uh, agendas on the table, right? The fact that we didn't score this. Okay. Kind of makes us seem like it's not interesting, but let's go ahead and score this. Got a boomerang from HQ. Again, only 18 cards left. And now they only have two cards in hand. So if any of these are an enemy, I think they're quite scared. We have to make sure if they ever have what their second click is really important, right? Because we can net damage, net damage, and then they go and and then they have one click to, to do something. Immediately they draw with Dream Net, but we gotta watch out. If we have blood and water in the hand, we can get lethal with a false lead. So watch out, especially with an enemy, which I'd love to draw. We want to draw an enemy and a blood in the water. There's a corroder. Okay. So we know the value of our palisade. Not amazing. They have a lot of money. Okay, there's a blood in the water. So we need to set up some sort of lethal play. Um, we have some lethal situations where if they end their turn with one card in hand, we can do install advanced blood in the water, narrow spike. So this is all going to come down to, oh, let me move my face. This is all going to come down to the timing and whether or not they end up respecting uh, the, uh, the false lead. Because if they end their turn with one card in hand, that's it. I would love to draw into um, an enemy. An enemy would make this so much easier. We also have two snares in hand, which I don't think they can afford to run HQ. I'm putting this on the table so it can maybe entice a run. Mark has been on archives. Oh my God. Like every turn. So here they have four cards in hand. Still four clicks though. Mind you, it's a bit harder to false lead uh, a Sable. This, if we forfeit, they lose two clicks. So, wow, this is interesting. Okay. I'm not actually that interested in res the Ingram flush. It doesn't really tax out too much of the credits. This is going to mean they're going to draw a card. There's only one snare in 25 cards. But if they hit like a lot of stuff, it can be an issue. They'd have to hit a lot of traps here. They've already got their free clickless card draw. So I'm going to hit them with the net damage first to see if we get something. Inside job. Okay. So they have two cards in hand. So if they hit two agendas, we win. So I'm just going to let this happen. Oh, wait, they draw a card. No, no, never mind. I forgot the fact that they draw a card there. One Erica Cypher down. That's it. And I think they saw the other card. That, they know the next card we're going to draw. Okay, if they run here, they run for third click. I think that's it. Because we can take two cards out of their hand. So if they run this click, I, uh, they probably get flatlined. Okay, they're not running. So they drew up. Again, this is the big window because this card false lead says if able. So if they have like one click left, you can't false lead them. So you generally, there's only uh, so many, like they're playing around this pretty smart. It's a moon pool. We're not going to res that. They're probably going to trash it. They have 22 credits and we're not really taxing their money. I wonder if we put a snare on the table. A snare on the table there would have been lethal. I'm actually considering it. They also knew that we drew into a nearest spike. I'm going to put a snare on the table and click for credits. Okay, let's see. I'd never like putting snare on the table. It's just like, so it's, if you put an advanced card on the table as a trap and it fails, there are still some game states where they'll consider running it in the future. Unadvanced cards are way less likely to run because they generally don't have that big of an impact on the game. Okay, three clicks left. This is just money. They'll have four cards in hand. So if they run the snare here, we're fine. They're running HQ, shit, after we took the snare out. So we res the Engram flush here, Engram flush. Oh, we can afford to do it. Uh, we'll name event. We also have to watch out because they might be trying to deep dive at any point. So we have to keep that in mind. Admittedly, we can use false life to lead to play around a deep dive, but I don't think we need to. So if they hit a snare here, we're fine. They'll take three net damage. They'll have one card in hand and then we can false lead. So I'm not going to house the knives here. They hit the narrow spike. They knew about that. Oh, it, never mind. That was wrong because of Sable. Sable playing around the false lead is actually pretty interesting. I think they are going to deep dive here. Shit. Uh, we'll res this one. This actually starts costing their money. So we spent six credits for two Engram flushes. We're going to try and hit. We're going to have to do some stuff here. So they broke all of it. Continue movement. Okay, so we're going to hit one of these. We want to hit a deep dive. We hit an overclock. How can we make this awkward? We can get them into two cards in hand, which means we can do install advance advance with the blood in the water. That doesn't win. I think we'll get deep dived. But first, we'll do the spin doctor. If they steal an agenda here, it's a bit different. 
I'm going to do this. So we're going to put back some cards into the deck. So I think our money is like kind of okay. Yeah. Thinking. Yep. So we got to decide what we want to put it back in the deck. Mitosis is not that interesting. Um, we're just trying to get two cards in the deck to, to dilute, to dilute the R and D. So there's less agendas. Again, it's the single vulnerability audit. They find it. Um, they win. So the question is, what do we want to bladder words? Probably fine. Yeah, I was considering it. Um, but I think we want to keep that for a win condition. And I think we could just put another hedge fund. All these trashables is a bit, I don't know, not that necessary. Let's see. Okay, all you. So we can lose here. Any shaper gain eight? Class act. Oh my God. Nice. Oh, uh, there's a huge bait. They're trying to bait out the false lead. Huge respect. Okay, wow. We have another blood in the water, which it's getting a bit trickier to, to score out. Um, like I, they've been checking a lot of stuff. They didn't check the snare, which is exactly what happens every time I put a snare on the table. I think we can just put this into your new remote server credit credit. If we put this in archives, like they could potentially be scared of it. I don't know. Not great. Now we're flooding up a bit. They have uh, only 12 more cards. So we have to make sure every piece of net damage kind of counts. Mind you, they know what these are now. So they don't have to play around anemone, anemone, which if we have anemone, that's a big deal. They also have six cards here. So they generally want to use them. Because otherwise they're going to discard, mind you, their hand size is only, well, they, now they have seven, but their hand size is only three. So we might see like inside jobs, value boomerang, stuff like that. Boomerang is a bit different. Okay, now here they can safely just hit about anything. Oh, we probably get deep dived here, honestly. And I don't think we can do much about it. Hit the snare, please. Yes. Did we get a deep dive? We did not get a deep dive. We got a dream that a pinhole threading and a mutual favor. There's only four more cards. They have a tag, though. Not that we can do much with the tag. We can consider trashing resources. Um, the dream net's going to end up, eventually they're not going to have any more cards, but it's probably the one we want to trash the most. They trash the snare. Again, one on server nine. I'd love to keep those on HQ. I probably don't install those. They did check our last on Advanceable. All right, they have some issues seeing the tags, it seems, but they're going to run R&D here. It looks like we're going to get deep dived. This is where we consider using a House of Knives token. Uh, we haven't seen, we, we know that they're not on, uh, on, on three deep dives because we've seen a Croder. Interesting. Um, so I'm going to go for the one and four here. Got it. Sick. All right. So no deep dive today. I wonder if calling event is still correct. So we got the deep dive. In theory, we could have waited for them to break because if they didn't have events, that's not the right time to do that. So single access on top of my D. That's a sting. Ooh, one more damage inside jobs out. They only have one card in hand thinking, hold on. I'm going to false lead. I think we win. I think that's it. So if I'm not mistaken, now what we can do is we can do install. Advance, score, because this is a one, two, and then Neurospike. Yes, it worked. Good game. Oh, that was nice, nice deep dive uh, jukes. That was super cool. Yes, there's some real teeth with this thing. And this deck has three copies of um, Neurospike because you generally want to see it early. But as soon as you score the false lead and you have the House of Knives, you can make things really, really ugly. Again, Anemone, like if they just run into Anemone, if they don't do it uh, first or uh, generally third and fourth click, like it's a huge problem for them. It's generally, I think you need to do it. Not second click. And fourth click is also pretty bad. But that's combo, like you could, we could in theory scored out two Blood in the Waters. Actually, that would have been lethal too. We could uh, install Advanced Blood in the Water, score Blood and Water, got to six points. That was also totally uh, reasonable, but I wanted to go for the narrow spike because we can, the other one would have been a zero X for, for, for game. Really fun. A lot of pressure running out of cards there. They got set up relatively quickly. Like they were seemed, they did seem to be a bit um, uh, scared of running into uh, face checking into sentries, which I think is right. Like size and time can just lose you the game if you're not prepared for it. But this, um, this security testing is a, is a lot of money. That's for sure. Cool. Let's try another one. All right. We're playing it against Aaron. Um, playing as Zaya. So Zaya is going to have that central pressure. Maybe he wants to access additional cards, uh, things like Docklands Pass. That's kind of a liability sometimes into these net damage decks. Opening hand's abysmal. Uh, this is an agenda that's really scary to take on and largely exists because of, um, because of Neurospike. I'm going to go ahead and mulligan that for sure. Oh, wow, it's back. Fantastic. Mind if I run? No, I'll do it up. Okay, so our deck doesn't have a lot of ice. We'd love to be able to draw into ice in the early game. Um, Aaron, she kept her hand, so I'm kind of scared of, of what sort of aggression that could be. Mind you, this is startup, so it's not like we're going to get diversion of funds, but there's a chance that we're going to see what, uh, what's it called does? Uh, pan weave, something like that. So. Let's hope for the best. We could just mitosis on the table. Okay, let's just mitosis on the table. Let's just go ahead and mitosis two agendas and hope that maybe that's good enough. And credit, go, right? We always want to stay on at least three credits. So one of these advanced traps could potentially be a cerebral overrider. But the fact that we're now on four credits means that Aaron can plow into centrals and not worry about snare. So 
it's the best you can do with mitosis. Ideally, you do like sure gamble mitosis or sorry, hedge fund mitosis. Uh, but that's kind of the best we got going on. I mean, no consideration which one I want uh, her to run. Like, do you put it on the inside or the outside? I just kind of go random. So hopefully our opponent can also make uh, cannot also make a read. Now, the vulnerability of audit is really scary. A lot of times if that's on the table, you are sweating pretty hard, especially if you're playing in person. But there are some chances if Aaron doesn't run this that we don't score it. We just score the uh, the sting and leave this on the table because later on in the game, we can do advance, advance, neurospike potentially. Uh, maybe even we can fast advance it a bit if we have uh, a moon pool and then do neuro, neuro. And uh, maybe that's lethal. So your mileage may vary. Saya, so mind you, also only has 40 cards as a system gateway runner. So we'll see if that like may, we do play games where runners get to the end of their uh, to the end of their deck. So that can matter. Seeing the neuro spike in hand actually makes this kind of interesting. We unfortunately don't have enough credits to score an agenda on the table and then Neurospike. In theory, we could do it with this thing, but it doesn't do too much damage. Actually, it does like three damage. Maybe. Maybe Varen dips really low here. So I got the credits. Dirty Laundry as well. So nine credits, not too bad. And this is the big guess. Is Aaron going to run these? Ooh, that's a really good start. So that's the Begulter. So you can start face checking aggressively and then some clickless economy. So now we have to figure out what to do with this turn. If we score this thing, it does two damage. If we do credit... Score Neurospike. That's three damage, not lethal. If we do advance, advance, Neurospike, we can't afford it. So that kind of solves that. I, I'm going to score the Sting out, but I guess we might as well first spin Doctor. Yeah, okay. HQ's not great here. The Blood in the Water is a bit dodgy. I think we want to get our money up, but I feel like, I don't know, maybe we just don't score any of these and we just credit up. So next turn we can do Hedge Fund and then score. Like maybe if Aaron didn't run these these turns, she's not going to run next turn. Again, sometimes you're setting up like Ronin Clearinghouse plays, but I think if that was Ronin Clearinghouse, we would have won here, right? Like that could have been lethal. If that was a Ronin, well, Clearinghouse for two meat damage, advance, advance, Ronin uh, for even more. Jailbreak, coming HQ, going to get two credits back, draw a card as well. Neurospike, I think that's the card she saw on turn one. And a Moon Pool, which she could trash for three. But this is the liability again, a very powerful card in P, but also a very terrifying card in P. Neurospike, mind you, isn't a terminal. Sometimes I think it is, but there's some interesting plays where we can score out and get uh, get Aaron down to like zero hand size and then just score out the blood in the water. Like we can get some really flashy stuff here. It's a spin doctor. Is this worth seven, uh, two credits from Aaron? I think it actually might be worth the mitosis. Yeah, I think the mitosis is good. And sometimes we lose spin doctors of R&D because we don't ice it up that well. Okay, Aaron has five cards in hand. So if we do credit, credit, vulnerability audit. So this does one net damage. Then the Neuro Spike does three damage. So she still has one card in hand. So it's not like we can score this after lethal, but we're very, very close. I think I'm just going to do, I'm going to do hedge fund, score out agenda credit. And score out agenda, I mean score out sting. Uh, the order here doesn't matter. We hit a dirty laundry and sure gamble. So it's a fair bit of money out of her hand. Uh, so at this point, we could do one more damage with the Neuro Spike. I think I'm just going to click for a credit. We could also consider getting the Urtica Cypher on the table. Moonpool on the table is kind of interesting too, but I want to get Moonpool and Urtica on the Cypher on the table together. But Moonpool technically lets us get the blood and the water out of our hand. Uh, we've seen one jailbreak so far. I don't think we've seen Legworks or Dockland's Pass hit the bin. So we have to watch out because again, Zaya does want to see multiple cards when she runs. So HQ pressure is going to be legit. Getting a Sting scored is nice because it makes it a bit scarier. Now the other ones are going to be uh, three damage steal. It's wild. So let's see what we can do here again. It's pretty scary that we can have a three pointer on the table that we want to score out, but we're not going to. Second daily cast. Also, if we top deck another Neuro, like we consider like advancing this once more, I am really sweating here. What do we do? Okay, the other play is like if we get Moon Pool Ronin on the table, advance the Ronin once. That means we could Moon Pool for one advancement. No, that's not going to work out, is it? The problem is like we have to keep advancing this. Otherwise, all we can do is advance, advance Neuro, unless we get the Moon Pool on the table as well. Maybe we can draw once. Yeah, that's fine. And then install these two. Because if we top deck another agenda off of mandatory draw, we can use the moon pool to clicklessly move credits to the vulnerability audit. And then maybe we can do vulnerability audit score into neuro spike into install advanced blood in the water, something like that. This is an Urtica. Whoa, interesting. I've never done this, but we could in theory do three damage. Yeah. Axis. <laughs> Technically, there's a window where they commit to access. And at that point, you still have a paid ability window. And after that point, it, you, they can't jack out. I've never done this, but this is cool, cute. You can res this, remove this. Crash up to two cards from HQ, done. Reveal up to two face down cards in archives, okay. Shuffle them to R&D, place one advancement. So was that worth an extra net damage? Probably not. We got a Harmony AR therapy though, so that seems like a good card to hit. Tranquilizer Bones, Urtica goes down for two. All right, 
she drew back up to five. So again, this is not going to be lethal. It's all advanced events. Ronin, interesting. So I'll make sure we're not goofing this. This is four damage. Yeah, four damage. And the blood in the water, mind you, was potentially a fifth damage. Now we could do install events, um, a clearing house behind a palisade. Not like amazing because there's a lot of inside jobs and boomerangs, but that at least gets cards out of her hand, which seems like appealing. Because this now makes it, technically we can do five damage in a turn. Clearing house for one, this for one, narrow spike. Wow, snap cleaver, sick. I don't want to res this because if we do, not only can we not threaten snare, but we can't play the hedge fund. So that cleaver read is, is perfect. Uh, this is three credits to come down. We are making Aaron spend more money than a lot of Jinteki decks do. Yeah, I was going to say she installed a card. Maybe we have something, but yeah, that, that one draws a couple cards. So I don't know about that. Okay, we want to draw. I think we're going to draw once more and then we can hedge fund. So now in theory, if we get a moon pool, we can like maybe foot, put fast to counter into the vulnerability audit, score it, and then do neuro neuro. If we're like really brave, we could also double advance this once more. But I, I, I think at this point, Aaron would consider running it. That's been on the table for so long. This is where the running can be a bit aggressive because Shu has all these cards in hand. Ronin from HQ, that's coming down for two credits for sure. Oh, she doesn't have two credits. Never mind. My Juzai gets the credits after the run. But now it's worth noting that she knows that we have a Ronin. Penny Shaver coming down Unity. Six cards in hand. Going to have to throw one in the bin. It's a Blueberry Diesel. All right. Mitosis. Kind of like it. Kind of into this. Again, we could do advance, advance. No, we're close. We're really close. If one of these sticks, it would have to be the clearing house to stick. We could get a lethal next turn. But if she runs the Ronin and not the clearing house, and the thing is she knows we have the Ronin. So if she runs the clearing house, she's pretty sure the other one is the Ronin. Uh, false leaves is also quite interesting. I think we might just put three cards on the table. So we'll mitosis the ones that I think are more important with advancements and put this on the table as well. All right. Now there's a lot of like calling, so like really tight running that has to happen. If we score the false lead, again, credits will be a problem. Ooh, we're not getting deep dove, are we? Okay, just an access, no trash. Not a lot of cards in our deck are not trashable. And that's the clearing house. So unfortunately, the run is going to come down after. But actually, money might be a problem. Getting more money on the penny shaver, mind you, this is three credits. That's coming down. Taking the penny shaver money and probably running server eight. Yeah, it's the fact that she saw this as the run and really hurts our cause. But at least we'll have the false lead down. So if Aaron ever falls underneath a certain credit th uh, card threshold, like midway through the turn, we just pop the false lead. And cards like Anemone will really help us there. Ooh, that was a run off the top. Advance, advance, advance. Does the damage. Unfortunately, we are now just below hitting another blueberry diesel. We are just below snare threshold. But we have to remember to keep our hand on this like potential trigger because as soon as she ducks below credits, we can potentially score out. Admittedly, for that, we're going to need at least five credits. So not this turn. And now we can't hit snare. So Aaron's going to come in aggressive. So I getting credits off of that. Penny Shaper getting up the credits. There's a sec testing. This has been a huge issue for us. It's like good old honor and profit days back in Shinteki's payday. I think we're just going to click for credits here. Again, the enemy is really interesting. I think we just take three credits. Again, there's no diversion of funds at startup. But if she ever installs too many cards, again, we can do one damage here, four damage. So we have blood in the water. We can kill on four cards. Otherwise, we have to kill on three cards. Like just hitting a snare here will be interesting. Uh, I guess we can't afford it at that point. There's a bladder word coming down. Archives, mind you, is the sec testing. Getting more money on Penny Shaver. Coming back here. That's a moon pool. That's our last moon pool, I think. Yeah. Penny Shaver. Okay, that's great. That's hedge fund. Um, that's really great. We need that. So unfortunately, if we do hedge fund, we're not doing install advance. This is where like you can leave a three point on the table for the whole game. It's always like really interesting. Let's draw once. Okay. So now potentially we have a lethal threat. If we ice up HQ, yeah, I'm gonna ice up HQ. I don't care about centrals. There's three snares in there. If we hit a snare, we'll be down to six credits, which is enough for the combo. Yeah, but now we we have some teeth because this is one damage, this is three damage, this is a fourth damage. So if Aaron hits on any uh, I think odd click, generally. Oh shit, it's a vulnerability audit. Audit. Class act to draw. Okay, so here there's no point pulling it. That's really scary. Running R and D again. A snare here could win us the game, I think. Shit, Urtica. Whoa, running glass click and a snare here is so a win. Nothing. The fact that she knows what we're drawing also allows her to play a bit intelligently. Or more intelligently, of course. Okay. Man, if we just kept advancing this, we'd have a a, a plan. Here we go. The Ronin's not actually that useful to us. It's the House of, uh, the House of Knives that's more useful. Mind you, the House of Knives is on the inside. The House of Knives is much more useful because the Ronin, we have to spend our whole turn scoring out, which is a bit of a bummer. And we're also dipping a bit too low in credits because, again, to score this and the Neuro Spike, it's uh, five credits. So if we hit a snare here, we can afford to fire it, but not much else. Like, then we can't combo. And interestingly, if this click, wait, I think we win. Access? 
Because I think we win, right? This does one net damage. So Aaron will be on four. Then with four, we can do, we'll, she'll lose her turn because of the false lead. We can do advance, advance, score this for one damage. This for three damage. Oh, we're literally short a click. Never mind. Wow. Yeah, we can't get the blood of the water down. We need to advance this more. Uh, so yeah, that's fine. Funny enough, game points on the table. But yeah, we need to get this to the triple advancement. We should have advanced this to turn sooner. Hit a boomerang. Running archives for the credits. This is going to be close. Oh, no. Oh, no. Okay, five cards in hand. I think we advance both of these. Click for credit. This is awkward. I'm pretty sure Aaron's going to run server two, and that's going to be it. But we'll see. Because next turn, we can do... So oh, we're actually credit short of doing Neurospike. Shit. Oh, no. We're credit short of doing Neurospike. We do advance this Ronin, score that. That's four damage. But that's one click, one click, one click. Oh, maybe we should advance the Ronin twice. Actually, advancing the Ronin twice is interesting. Maker's Eye. Get out. Snare? Snare could be a potential. Yeah, okay. Unfortunately, our economy is a bit gutted. If she hits a stink here, I think we have something. She has a tag and two cards. I feel like we can figure something out here. Obviously, economy is the biggest issue. We win. Maker's Eye. Wow. Hitting the snare perfectly. So if I'm not mistaken, we can do advance res three net damage install score got a nice gg good game well there's a a three pointer on the table by the way you should never reveal your secrets don't do what i'm doing here but yeah the whole game was on the table i think aaron was trying to close the game off with um with the maker's eye but like in theory it's really risky right like she hasn't seen a snare yet so uh, a lot of times that will be a snare um, and then if you hit two agenda, especially because there's a lot of one pointers, things like stings, like you take a lot of damage really quickly. So I think there's a gamble there that she could close the game off. Thanks for the game, eh? But we did set it up. We had stuff on the table and then you can do that sort of like combo kill. And merely like economy is a big problem with this deck. I don't know what to do about it. Like I don't love playing Hanse or Celebrity Gift. I don't think Bladder where it's a real economy card. Like anybody will trash it after it fires like once. Um, so I'm not actually sure. I think subliminal messaging is a possibility, but I'm seeing a lot of criminals that are running all the time. They really want to run all the time. So it's a, it's a bit hard. Back in the day, old Jinteki decks used to have a 3-1 agenda that allowed them to spend two clicks for three credits. And that was like a lot of times enough for that deck, which is wild. So I think we do have to sort that out. I don't know if Maryland's good enough, but you're spending your influence and you need your influence for your for your traps. All right, let's do another one. All right. Playing more Jinteki startup deck. Uh, we are playing against Ken, who I'm pretty sure is going to try and deep dive us, let alone wants to run a lot. Gets a credit on the first run event. And luckily, we're, we can sometimes be a bit tricky to run. Our opening hand has an anemone, which is kind of perfect if we want to get the deep dives out on that combo turn. We have a mitosis with two mitosis triggers and a hedge fund. You can't ask for a better hand than this. Let's keep this. Thank you, you too. So games have been a bit uh, difficult. They've been generally pretty close. And a lot of times you have to get agendas on the table and be comfortable without scoring them out. A second piece of ice is actually like pretty generous. I want to get the more taxing guys on HQ because I'm assuming we're going to see legwork, stuff like that. And then we can have the enemy on R&D just so that we have a nice, uh, maybe a nice net damage, but hopefully two more net damage off the res at least. So we'll just do that. Again, our hand's a bit fragile. It's not great the mitosis to zero cards in hand. Um, next turn, technically, we'd have one, but we'll see what we can do with this. Playing online, it's hard to get reads on your opponent to know, are they the ones that will always run advanced cards, unadvanced cards? Uh, so generally, the first cards you put on the table will just weed things out. Class act coming down, filter draw. It's nice that this is down early. Sometimes you're surprised when you think you have them on low hand size and they install these. So at least not a big surprise there. I think we could just put everything on the table. Like just let's just go. Let's just install every single card. I do six credits isn't a lot to res stuff. We always want to keep at least four credits for snare. Uh, but here we have some potential devious stuff. False lead, mind you, has been like overperforming in this deck by a mile. Cat's Cradle. They res the size, run the size in town. Oh, buffer drive. That's like neat, interesting tech for this sort of deck. Mind you, I feel like there wasn't that many ways to deal with net damage decks in startup, and Midnight Sun has really changed that. There's a lot of good stuff on the runner side, and Buffer Drive was the classic way. This prevents one card per turn that's trashed from net damage to go to the bottom of the stack, which is reasonable. Um, that helps. It helps on the long term, but it doesn't help from the burst kill, and we're trying to do the burst kill, so I'm actually feeling pretty good about that. So we can do score Ronin for three net damage. We can score a false lead for one damage. We can res the bladder word. I'm going to res the bladder word. I feel like a lot of times I might be right to not res the bladder word and res it when the net damage actually matters, as opposed to resing it now where they have full information and they know if they want to deal with it or not. So advanced score false lead is the thing. That's good. It does a damage, but we want to plan the rest of our turn out before we do that. There's really no reason not to. So let's just draw. Okay. 
Maybe it's worth doing this earlier to see what the damage is, but that's a bravado. Now they can choose to put it on the bottom of their deck. So doing one net damage, technically not efficient, but still it gets cards out of their hand and we want to, we need to not grind them out. We need to burst them out. So I think advancing the Ronin to four and leaving it is probably going to be a big part of our game plan going forward. This is like the sort of thing that you uh, hopefully neurospike someone. We have a really good mitosis hand here. Bravado. Wow. Wait, this could be lethal. It's straight into the Sai Santan. We know they're playing a lot of run events. We'll call event. There's a big chance that this is five net damage. Mind you. Let's see. Fire unbroken. They live. Wait. Oh, no, they don't. Never mind. It was just firing. Oh, no. Oh, good game. Yeah, that's a scary one. <laughs> no worries. <laughs> Pun intended. So this is like obviously a really scary one. Um, we're going to run this one back, but this is a, a problem. Uh, you don't want to face check a lot of times without a sentry if we have five credits, because this easily does five, six net damage sometimes. So watch out. All right, we're running it back. Fantastic. So our opening hand still pretty good. Double Engram from Centrals. Uh, generally, criminals are not very good at dealing with code gates. A lot of times Boomerang will get you through this. Uh, the opening hand is good enough. We have a mitosis target. Hopefully we'll draw into one more. We don't have a hedge fund, but hopefully a bladder wart is enough economy. I'm pretty sure that Ken has enough money to trash these things. You generally do want to trash those. Ken took the mulligan. I didn't pay attention to what we trashed. We could have got a bit of a read on, on Terrell's deck, but that's good enough. So we'll put the bladder word in the remote and just ice up double centrals. Uh, generally, they want to play one run a turn, and it's harder to get value off your runs when you're worrying about this sort of thing. And it's really, again, easy for Engram Flush to call event just about all the time against Ken, who first time uh, you play a run event, gain a credit. A lot of run events in there. I'm also sipping around hit Swift, which does deal with the false leads well enough. Oh, okay, there you go. <laughs> there you go. Safety engaged. Yeah, cool. So now they got down their uh, their killer so they can start running. I'm going to go ahead and read the bladder word. They don't have too much economy. Again, a lot of times you want the net damage on here more than credits. Sentry breaker check. So here we can consider my toasting thing out. I don't love it. It would put us onto way few credits. And on top of that, it would make our hand a single blend in the water, which is not fantastic. Admittedly, uh, sometimes if you advance a Ronin after your mitosis, it, you can do advance and install Ronin, blend in the water. Like that's actually pretty legitimate. You can do mitosis, advance Ronin, and then maybe even win. Uh, but I'm just going to try and stabilize economy because I'm pretty sure they're going to pressure our, um, our centrals and we're going to have to spend some credits rising ice. Next turn, unless we draw into a, sh a hedge fund, we'll probably end up mitosising out some combination of cards. I'm thinking the Ronin and the false lead is probably the best. We'll see also what you do. I kind of like the triple advance Ronin. Ronin, fire, blend in the water. Mm. If they have three cards in hand, we'll see. Dirty Laundry, probably Archives. Yeah, there you go. In terms of uh, code gates that do damage in startup, I'm going to miss a couple. Um, there's Diviner, technically. I think Engram Flesh is the really important one. That's hard to deal with that. All right, our pack campaign sticks. The second one as well. Interesting. So if we Mitosis, we'll go down to five credits. So we're still not going to get Bladder Wart value. But two Bladder Warts on the table is nice. A lot of times if you get multiple of them, sometimes the runner gets discouraged. I think we're actually going to go for this. Again, we didn't get enough time to suss out whether our opponent's going to be running or not. We also could in, in consider doing the clearing house as well, like do Ronin clearing house, which if they don't run, like very quickly can be lethal. I actually like that a lot because if we do Ronin clearing house, that's if they don't run, this is two damage, advance, advance, score, or not score, but trigger the Ronin, that's three more damage. So eh, that can work out for you as well. And so far, Tyrell might be on the back foot a bit cautious uh, considering what happened in the last game, but they're pretty well set up. Maybe they're going to wait for the coder, but like you're Ken, you need to run. Yeah, here we go. Come on, res Engram Flush. Will we afford to res this? Yeah, we will. We can still throw in Snare. This is going to hit some run events from the hand, which is fantastic. If we call event, we'll also have a chance of hitting deep dive. This thing's really annoying, that's for sure. Fire. This card can't flatline you. But we can hit boomerang inside job dream net. Okay, that dream net, I think you want to get on the table as soon as possible. Running with four credits here, so they can trash most of the stuff. But hit the blow in the water. Ah, oh, feels bad. So that took out the dream net, though. That feels good. And they have only... Okay, if they didn't draw up, the Ronin would have been lethal there. So that last click draw seemed pretty good. Bladder word. Man, man, if there's a way that we could just spend our credits, uh, we actually could have got lethal with the bladder word, right? We have to spend two credits because then this would have been a credit and then Ronan would have advanced. Oh man, that would have been so cool. But we have no way to like just dump credits into the air. I wish we could, funny enough. We probably should have planned our turnout. We hit a boomerang, which is good. That's kind of a card they replay over and over again. So it's good to get out of hand. I think here we probably just want to credit up to be able to resist and threaten snare. The other idea is to put up another bladder word on the table. Actually, that's interesting. If we put another bladder word on the table and res it, nah, let's just take money. Urtica Cypher, mind you, as an unadvanceable trap, like as a non-advanced trap, is not the worst. Sometimes runners will check it. I feel like Tyrell has a minute here to deal with the bladder word if they want to. 
the fact that we're clicking for credits means that our economy is bad. So it puts a lot more pressure on uh, this sort of thing. Okay, they have the Cat's Cradle. Admittedly, a Chesva helps, but it's still pretty expensive. It's six credits to break. Pretty good. Mitosis. Ooh. 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 <laughs> Let's dump the hand. Let's dump the hand. All right. So we have some real threats on the table. Clearing house into Ronin is a really big deal. If they run the Urtica, uh, that makes all those other plays easier. We also can res a bladder word, and one of them will do net damage. Mind you, these are all zero cost cards, so we can't res them to like duck something. Interesting enough, we res the Engram Flush for three credits because the cat's cradle will be down to one credit. So we can actually res another bladder word to do two net damage. Um, which actually is potentially lethal too. If Tyrell ends up with three cards in hand, we have a couple lethals. So this could be it. If Tyrell doesn't make the right calls here, there's a chance that this is lethal. Oh, that's the card out of their hand. Huh. Okay. Thinking. I think we res this because it drops us down to one credit. So then we can do bladder word, bladder word, clearing house. They have one click left. If we keep our money, we can do clearing house Ronin, which is five damage. That's more. Yeah, that's just more. I think we're going to keep the more play. Yeah, if they don't run the table. Uh, we have lethal here. Yeah, if we res this, we go to one. So bladder would be two, and then we can do uh, just the clearing house because I don't think we can afford the Ronin. Wait, no, we could have. We could do advanced, advanced Ronin. We'd actually have two credits. Oh, wait, no, we could have done everything. Oh, I feel really bad about that. That would have been so much more flashy. If I'm not mistaken, I'd have to run the numbers, but I'm pretty sure if we res this for three, we go down to one, res this, go down to zero, go up to two, fire the two bladder word damages, the clearing house damage. Okay. Uh, we can res the bladder word like it's creditless. Only one of them, actually, no. Or less, both of these will fire. No, one of these will fire. Oh, hold on, clearing house. Yeah, we could have done everything. Damn. So we'll trash this. Two me damage. Gets a sure gamble and a jailbreak. Mandatory draw. Trigger one bladder word. The other one doesn't do damage. If we had a blood in the water. We could score out, but we're just gonna do advance, advance, res, flatline. Good game. A table can be scary. It didn't seem like our opponent wanted to check our stuff, which is pretty hard. A lot of times if you have a run events, so you want to go centrals, you have your breakers, that kind of see, it feels like the game plan. But yeah, there's a lot of cards that if advanced and you don't deal with them, can sneak up on you. That's pretty wild. I'm, I'm pretty sure we could have res this actually, duck down to one, and then we would have one credit. So we'd res one bladder where it, we'd get a credit back, a credit back, two net damage, two from the meat damage, and then three more from the net damage. Wow, that's a seven damage turn. Not to self-run everything. It's somewhat true. Admittedly, if they ran the Urtica, we would have probably ended up at the same conclusion, but. Cool. Advanceable traps. Pretty scary if you don't run them. You gotta figure out which ones you gotta run. Let's do another one. All right. Welcome back to Match Ball Grid. I'm back after a bit of a vacation. We're still here playing Startup and we're playing Personal Evolution in Startup to do Trap Deck. We're playing against Essa, which is gonna be an interesting matchup. Best of luck. Have fun. Because Essa has a lot of disruption inherently. But if Essa goes down to low hand size by taking a lot of core damage, that's something we can potentially capitalize on it. So I want to see how far call goes in terms of call for judgment goes in terms of taking on the core damage because they can play conservatively and just get seven hand size and try and play that game. But also if we sabotage a lot of cards into archives, sometimes it's hard to run archives because you might take three, four net damage in a single run by accessing all these agendas that fire personal evolution our opening hand is pretty good we have two mitosis triggers not too excited to mitosis both of these i think we can just slap them on the table i think since the last time i recorded games of this i changed one change in the deck i made one change i dropped the palisade and i added uh, a hansei review just to have more economy in the deck because the economy is really hamstringing this deck uh, we're also going to see if uh, advanceable traps get countered a bit by light the fire and s a card that allows you to take a core damage to run a remote server and trash everything without any of the effects or texts on the card that's pretty powerful if you're not wor worried about cerebral overrider chastushka no further action that's going to be sab four i'm going to hit one from hand and then three from the top of the deck so we lost an overrider a snare and a moon pool so no agendas mind you we have blank three point agenda uh, agendas. Uh, I like all the sabotage in a single turn. You really do need Ice HQ against Asa. I think we might have actually wanted to put an enemy there. We'll do two from the top. We lost the Hedge Fund and Spin Doctor. Three Spin Doctors are a recursion card, but with six cards and archives, that can be a bit tricky to check. And now they are on up on seven hand size if they want to. Spin Doctor in hand is pretty good. Do we want the Sting or the House of Knives? I'm a bit more interested in the House of Knives. It makes running a bit uh, harder and it does inherently protect archives. If there are enough traps, choose one card to trash with that marrow. Oh my God. Uh, no, thank you. We lost a second hitch one. <laughs> that is most of the economy in the deck. We have very light economy. We took out a, uh, what's it called? A uh, Begamont from their deck, which we actually have no barriers in this list, unfortunately. There's just no barriers in uh, that I'm really excited to play. 
All right, so we could consider scoring this out, the sting. Doesn't really do too much. We could get Spin Doctor on the table, which is kind of nice. I'm going to put this into a new remote. I'm going to ice up HQ and I'm going to click for a credit. This way, uh, they can't really sabotage. If they think there's a Spin Doctor on the table, we can always recover from it. So it's nice to keep a Spin Doctor you, if you can secretly. They're checking archives here. We could ping for a single damage with seven cards in hand. It feels a bit unnecessary. So we're just going to give them that access there. They see a Spin Doctor, all the hedge funds, a snare, and a cerebral overrider. So maybe we're going to help them. And mind you, when they hit this overrider, they do draw a card. So going to be tricky. Gachapon means if they hit a Begamot, they can do it on our turn, um, but it's going to be a twinning. So that's multi-axis, which can be actually pretty scary against this list. Uh, sometimes you don't want to see too many cards. Cause if you hit a sting into a snare, that can be a lot of damage suddenly. So this is going to be a hard matchup. I'm actually really interested to see how this goes. And we have a Ronin. Something you can consider mitosis -ing. Again, we could score the sting out. I'm not too excited to do that. Maybe we can just draw and click for two credits. A blood in the water in hand is kind of nice, but wait, this is technically a, what, a 6-2 agenda right now. So let's see if Call is going to take any more core damage here. Drawing up Dirty Laundry, probably our R&D there. Uh, we could take a card out of their hand with a House of Knives. Again, not too interested to do that. When you have six cards in hand, like here, it'd be basically, oh, can we hit, I mean, no, a breaker or something that's important. And mind you, Anarch and Startup is a bit different than Standard. They don't have heat breakers that they're excited to discard. So we actually could, oh, Blood of the Water off the top. Dang. We hit a Light the Fire, though. That's the interesting card in the matchup. And the Daily Cast is down. They're down to two credits. We're on six. With an Engram Flesh in hand, I think we can just ice up R&D, maybe click for two credits. We could consider at some point mitosising these two down. Mitosising a Blood in the Water is not amazing, uh, especially because it's going to be a 5-2 agenda. If we had like a Neuro Spike, I think we'd still be happier with the three-pointer. Let's just click for two credits here. This might slow down a bit of their aggression. Their economy hasn't been too strong here. They're definitely running Companions, I imagine, if they're running the Twinning. So we'll see. The Airs of Retrieval run, that gets the Begamot. That's actually not too bad. Um, they do have to pay... Ignoring all costs, it's not a cost on Begamot, right? No, it's you suffer. So they are going to take the core damage here. So Retrieval One installs the Begamot. Paladin Poemo gets trash from hand, just chooses this card, two cards. We'll do it from the top of the deck, that's fine. We lost an Urtica Cypher and another Blood in the Water. All right, they're only on one credit. They're down to six hand size. There's a Leech. So here we will res the Spin Doctor. We're going to draw a bit, so it's a bit tricky here. And we're going to shuffle away. We'll take back the Spin Doctor and the Agenda. Unfortunately, that's one fewer snare and they know it. And they're seeing some of our advanced wall traps. So let's see how that changes. They only have two credits next turn though, which is interesting. But we have a couple too many cards in hand to be able to, um, I think we're just going to get this on the table, to uh, be able to, uh, to score out the uh, sting. In theory, if we triple advance a sting here, we can hit one sting into another sting. I'm going to go ahead and do that because there's a chance here we score this. Like I'm not going to score this even though, well, technically we can't because we mitosis it. But if we score this, this will do a bit of damage. This will do a bit of damage. What's the actual math here? Not too much. All right. The running here, love this. Plonky into Begamot. We have a snare in hand. If we res an enemy, they break it for one. We might have to actually manually purge here. We're not going to res the enemy. We're not going to continue to movement because in theory, we have a lethal here. We can hit them once with this House of Knives. If they hit the snare and then, oh, they also pro definitely have steel skin scarring. We haven't seen that yet. So this run's probably a bit safer than it looks. They hit the enemy in HQ. We can start our turn here. Oh, there's the last sting. If they stole it at the top of the deck, that actually would have been very interested. interesting. So here we can think this through. False lead is very interesting for our game plan. This, if we hit that, it does X, it does one net damage from personal evolution. The number of copies in the other player area, unfortunately. So this is gonna do two damage, and then this is gonna do two damage. So that's four damage. Definitely not lethal. We could get this scored. We get a third one on the table. In theory, we want them to steal this one. And then we want to hit them both on the table. So that's a bit awkward for sure. I think we're just going to purge here. Throw it. Mm, the Ronin's pretty good. Because that does set up an easy, uh, easy lethal here. Steel skin scarring, though. We haven't seen any yet. And that is a card that now exists within this meta. Uh, within startup, mind you. It didn't technically exist before. The sort of ability I've had worse was common in the standard meta. But now you have to play around that in, in, um, in startup. So, so it's a fair bit harder to kill some Anarchs. We purge it out, so the Plongi means that they actually have to find um, a killer, potentially, before they want to run. Mind you, we have an Engram Flush. There's the Mystic, so events with Chastukshka for Mentor's credits over time. They have four cards in hand. I think we can do four... Oh, wait. Oh, man, if we advance the Sting once, we would have lethal, right? Because we could do advance, advance, score, score, score. Hold on. Are we missing something here? <laughs> Are we missing something? No. And if we do install advance, advance, we're no longer at three credits. Again, money can bog this deck down. Yeah, if we score this thing out, just two damage. 
This does two damage and we have one click short. So I think we can double advance this and click for credit. This is a bit dodgy, but in theory we have lethal potentially on the table. Um, I'm going to actually throw the sting out because I want them to steal the sting. I want them to run this thing because then it makes the stings on the table much more lethal. Yeah, like this. Uh, no further action here. I don't think so. They're running here. We'll hit once. There, we hit a rejig. Interesting. No further action. Now they stole this sting. That's going to do two more damage. And now, mind you, the stings on the table do even more damage. No steel skin scarring in hand. Draw. Draw. I think that's it. I think that's it. So, we'll score this. Oh, we hit the trash card, of course. And then if we score this, unless the last card is steel skin scarring, this should do it. Oof. Actually, technically, no. Even if it was a steel skin scarring, it wouldn't do it because that's two damage. Good game. That's a cool deck. The abatage into uh, net damage is really interesting. Yeah, Light the Fire is like a bit scary. Even if they install it, we have to like consider popping our, um, our Spin Doctor pretty early. Because if they, in theory, Light the Fire run what they think is a Spin Doctor, we can't pop it. And Archives gets a bit uh, a bit um, panicked. The fact that we fed them a Sting makes this so much more lethal. And we had to do the, generally you want to do the small damage to the big damage into the big damage if you're playing around Steel Sin Scarring. I'm not sure if I sequenced that optimally. But they definitely would have died there because we can do two damage with the Sting before the personal evolution damage, which would have been in flatline. We got there though. No traps on table, only agendas. Run everything. And sometimes it works. All right, we're playing some Trap P. We've had a pretty good matchup against Criminal. I think it's by far our best matchup in the startup format. Thanks, you too. And we're playing against, once again, against Saya. Opening hand, Mitosis with no real targets beside the Overrider. Two Spin Doctors is okay. We can mulligan this. It could get a lot worse, but our economy is a bit bad. I think I inserted another Hansei review into this deck by dropping a Moon Pool, which has been underperforming classically. I probably shouldn't be playing any of them. Uh, but we're going to go ahead and mulligan that. That's fine. We have an ice for essentials. Again, Zaya wants that multi-axis. Might as well ice up HQ sooner than later. Two blood in the water is not great, but we can repair that sooner. Uh, but Spin Doctor. In fact, Spin Doctor works quite well with um, a Hansei review. So we can probably do a bit of everything. So we can do HQ. Next, we could do install Spin Doctor Hansei review. It's nice. It's probably not going to get rid of two cards. Yeah, actually, this is not amazing. We can Hansei review one of these. Yeah, this that's actually really quite bad. Because now we have to spin Dr. Way a single agenda as opposed to the two blood in the water. Maybe we want to keep one blood in the water in hand. Boomerang HQ. Bravado. Okay. Uh, well, never mind. Uh, we'll res that. Does two net damage. They lost. Well, we'll see soon. We're going to throw that out of hand. Interesting. I think we throw a non agenda out of hand. Because if they steal the House of Knives, they're on one click. They can't steal an agenda here. Yeah, we're going to try and make it more likely that they lose. So we got a class hack and a boomerang. So if they access here, they have a 2-3 time access. Like, cute. yeah, they shouldn't access here. It's very likely they're going to die. If they hit an agenda, they die. It's 2 out of 3. <laughs> you hit an agenda, it's over. You Don't take this access, please. Up to you. Okay. An enemy! Come on! No! What? That was no, no way that was the right play. I don't think you access there, especially when we carved our hand, right? One out of three times. We don't win that one. Okay. All right. Let's keep going. Have another Hansei review. Wow, that's all the money in the deck. Let's go. We can do install advanced blood in the water. Don't honestly love it. Like, it gets us two points, which is cute, but this is generally how we win. I think we can consider it just because criminals are pretty bad. And we can also get a house and eyes on the table. That's fine enough. Okay, I'm going to score one of these out, but generally we don't want to tempo these out. We hit a class act. That's good, though. That's a good card to hit on zero cards in hand. That's a second class act. Yeah, that could have been close. Yeah, that was in there. <laughs> All right. Yeah, mind you, if we don't, um, don't know why this is so scary, personal evolution says when agenda is scored or stealing, that's a net damage. So if they hit an agenda in hand, they would have uh, flatlined. We have the Hansei review. If we want to play that, um, we're not going to score the House of Knives. Top of R&D here last click means a snare is lethal too. Yeah, not a lot of respect here. Our opponent is like really, really aggressive. But if they hit a snare here, they flatline to this House of Knives. So unless they have like a steel skin scarring, maybe that can allow them to uh, run a bit more aggressively, but generally you don't want to be running last click, that's for sure. All right, hedge fund, that makes it a bit easier. Um, we can just draw a hedge fund, see, we'll see what our turn is first. Draw is good, hedge fund, and we can ice up R&D. Uh, that means they can't get the cheeky central runs with Saya, the jailbreak, stuff like that. Even though I think with our opponent, we kind of want them to come in and run on us, uh, considering they haven't been respecting a lot of the, the, the main stage and techie traps there. House Knives is obviously a very good score. It does four damage, and we can choose when the damage is. So if they start running aggressively, we have an enemy that's three net damage out of nowhere. And then it can be hard to hit the top of R&D. This is the most money we've ever had. Penny Shaver, they definitely want to run. 
Just checking archives here. That tracks. We have to use a spin doctor. Uh, we could give them a net damage. I don't want to do that. And I think we'll bring either the moon pool or the hedge fund. I'm not a big proponent of the moon pool. Generally, the agendas don't stand around in our hand in this deck, so they can access there, gain their penny shaver credit. So let's take a card out of hand. Advance, advance, advance. We haven't seen a killer yet. Mutual favor, though, potentially could have become one. And now we have three net damage. We're on three agenda points, too, which is pretty good for us. We have no idea how our opponent reacts to advanceable traps, too. We haven't installed advance, advance, mitosis to whether they're like scared of Vertica, unscared of Vertica. They like the takedown of those clearing houses and Ronins, or whether they're afraid of three ball overriders. So we'll find out quite soon. There's a Chesma. I don't love installing this unless you have a way to inherently use it. I'd love to see a breaker come down right after this. Taking a card and two credits out of your hand. That's doing nothing to the board state. Oh, there you go. Big altar. That's what you want to see. So that's perfect. Because now you're actually making money off the Nemini. Running last click two here, like a snare is lethal. Our opponent is not respecting uh, a lot of the Jinteki traps. I'm going to hit the House of Knives here. Sure, Gamble out of hand is okay. Um, they 100% die to snare. They die to sting too, if I'm not mistaken. There's a lot of cards here they shouldn't uh, be running on. But Spin Doctor coming down. Okay, another House of Knives. We could put that on the table if we wanted to. Um, Sysenton is not amazing against the Begalter. This card, really the value of it is based off of whether your opponent has the killer or not. We can draw once here, double install maybe. Yeah, double install seems good enough. We'll see how, how our opponent interacts with that. With one card in hand, it's going to be hard for them to run because we can do one with the House of Knives, one with the Steel, so they might have to spend a lot of their tire, turn drying up. Maybe it'll be aggressive here. We haven't seen any Dirty Laundries. I think there's two more Bravados. Yeah, they're checking one of them. A lot of times people find an agenda here. I think actually we should zap with House of Knives for sure. That's a misplay on my part. I clicked too fast. That's a bravado, second. Because if we house the knives there, they can't run the last house of knives. Yeah, that's a misplay by a mile. Okay, draw blast click, never punished. Mitosis, no, no targets. Score this one out. Hitting a penny shaver from hand, not too important, but now every run is two damage. So if they just run R&D when we have three credits and at least a card in hand, <laughs> uh, that is uh, four damage out of nowhere. And that's not damage that they can break. It's not a subroutine, right? It's two damage from the res on this and two from these. So uh, very, very scary. And then they still have to access cards and have cards in hand for agendas. Credits are a bit low. I think we will actually will happily Hansei review away our Sison time. The Chesva means it's not very good unless it's in a remote server. And even then, not fantastic. This run here is credit positive, right? Like they make money off the Begalter, money off of Zaya, money off the Penny Shaver. That's really cool. Access the Sison time. Let's get our credits up. Snare in hand is perfect, especially when we can carve our hand down like this. Hansei review, discard a card, take a credit. So now HQ runs, potentially. Five damage. R&D run. A lot of damage. So now we just need to get threats on the table. We want to start playing with some stings. We want to start playing with snares. That is the first snare out of our deck. But our opponent has been running really aggressively, not respecting the snare. So we'll see how that works. On R&D here, they are running. Now, they boomerang this, mind you. Uh, Engram Flush is, I think, the only other card they'd be a bit worried about. We could probably not res this, right? Like it makes the other boomerangs awkward. I will do some net damage here to see before we res. Okay. So now if we res this, we can get them to two. No, I want to see if they misplay into the enemy. And we're not going to res this. Because it's not a great res anyways, unless the, the net damage is lethal. There's a sting. Fantastic. Three below overrider. Let's just get it on the table and see. Oh, actually, we have a mitosis. We don't have to do it like that. Let's draw once. See if we have a mitosis trigger. We do. Fantastic. So we'll see how our opponent runs. I'll do the one we want on the inside, the one they want on the outside. Now, if they run last click, the enemy that we didn't res for value again, we want to care when we res our ice. That's very interesting. We can res the enemy, do four damage, then maybe two more damage off the clearing house. They have to call this right. It could be quite difficult. Uh, Urtica Cypher before net damage at that, this point, that is the flat line scare. They need to have four cards in hand to run a two advanced card in theory. So we'll see. I think if they run server seven, oh, they ran the inside so bad. If they run the outside there, I think that would have been. Uh, well, potentially lethal. They didn't rerun. But unfortunately, our inside trap versus outside trap, again, it's hard to call your opponent. You don't know where they're going to run. Roll a die. Don't know if they're going to run server seven now. And I'm going to try and keep this last house of knives on here just so that we have an enemy to do four damage. If they run HQ, they... It's not going to be good for them. I love when your hands only snares. <laughs> you stop worrying about HQ. Mind you, they only have five credits, but two in Chesva, six on the Penny Shaver, so they can jump up into money for sure. And if they run last click, and this is potentially a Ronin, right? Like, that's also very scary. Like, Ronin, an enemy, two House of Knives triggers. That's two, three, four, five, six, seven net damage. So if this is a Ronin, they can't run. They can't run last click at all, even not into an enemy if this is a Ronin. So they have to call this correctly. Because they read, immediately last click. If they run last click, we can get them down to two cards in hand, and then Ronin does three net damage. So 
Yeah, that is a, can be a bit hard. Twinning installed. Okay. I'm okay if they multi-access, especially when your hand looks like this. We'll draw once. Uh, Neuro spike. We can draw once more. Okay. Uh, go ahead. Run HQ, please. Please. Do run HQ. We want to keep at least eight credits now because of the twinning and see two cards, which is very easy for them to get the value off of uh, Chesva. I also want to draw that turn to make it seem like we have agendas in hand, so they're more likely to uh, run, uh, which I'm might have paid out here. I don't know if they're going to multi-access on two cards. We could consider like House of Knivesing, um, but if they hit two snares, they die anyway, so there's not a real big reason to do it. So we'll see. Twinning, mind you, they can use a counter there. One snare. They're going to see an additional card. It's one in three again that they don't die. Snare. Second card, Neuro Spike, the two one and threes. Oh no. If they access any other card there, that would have been lethal. Oh, that feels so bad. How does this keep happening? Okay, that's getting scary now. Our opponent is running. And if they get this on the table, um, or from our hand, mind you, that's a, a very different game. Ingram Flush, we can put that on HQ just to get cards out of our hand for better or for worse. They haven't shown a decoder yet. Um, but if I put that there, they're Probably aren't running HQ, and that's something we want. We probably should have actually clicked for credits because we always, always, always want to be on eight credits so that they can eat a double snare. So maybe that was a mistake. Maybe we shouldn't have drawn again. Man, two one and threes. Come on. Uh shit. If they multi-axis here, I'm gonna feel so bad. So even if we double house of knives them, uh, they and only hit one snare, it's not enough. If they hit snare into the agenda, it's enough that we would want to double house of knives. So this is potentially three, four, five, six. It's unlikely. Shit. If they hit a snare now, oh, they hit a nurse back. Okay, it's thank God. Well, now, hey, they're on game point. Okay, we only have one snare's worth. Maybe I'm gonna feel bad about that. Oh, but we're getting really unlucky on these axes, and our opponent just has been going as hard as they can. We have real two pointers, mind you. In theory, this could potentially be game winning, right? Like, if they think it's a vulnerability auto on the table, maybe we should have just jammed it, mind you. Right, that would have been seven points. Like we could consider, oh, thank God they're running it. All right, mutual favor, dirty laundry coming down. That is two core damage. Their hand size is now, maximum hand size is three. That's again, they can draw more than that, but at the end of the turn, they have to discard down, which is so important. Uh, mind you now, we only have zero credits, so they can clean the snares out of hand really easily. That's the one thing I don't like right now. Fortunately, this is not an agenda. We could res that enemy, do four damage here. It's not great to do damage when they're going to be discarding a card in a click anyways. There's a, a small chance we lose here. There's three and 26 chance that they went off the top of R&D. I think it's only three and 26. They're going to see two cards. Oh, they're just boosting the Begalter. Yeah, you can do that. Oh. Good game. No, how is that possible? Dodge two, one and threes. And then get the three and 26 off the top. Oh my God. Thanks, you too. That's so wild. Oof. They didn't respect our traps and that aggression seemed to have paid off. In terms of the agendas they can win off the top there, there's not a lot. It's the uh, the vulnerability audit for sure. Um, there's a vulnerability audit for sure. And we have as well um, two blood in the waters there. So I think that's all that the wins off the top. Um, we can fire a snare. A sting would have been lethal. The problem that we don't have a trap on the table that actually can do something is an issue. Though we were again begging for them to mess up really, really hard. And that's something I'm coming to a conclusion a lot of times with this deck is that it's really kind of on your opponent to misplay. So for over my experience in startup, uh, there's been a lot of tools. While this deck got a lot of tools, and I don't think by any means this is the best version of the deck, um, uh, runners maybe more than equally got better tools to deal with this sort of deck. So I think our best matchup by a mile is criminal because they generally don't have any of the tools. They're not inherently can play stone shit chart room or onicom. Mind you, onicom is pretty good in criminal. Uh, they're not often playing steel skin scarring and that stuff is so important for this matchup. I don't think buffer drive really matters. Um, while we're playing against Anarch with steel skin scarring and playing Asa and having huge hand size, huge issue, light the fire, huge issue. And then of course you have shapers with stone shit chart room, lat, onicom, all that's a big, big problem. And so much of this game plan was hoping our opponent messed up. And again, that does change once we have tempo and we are putting more advanced things on the table and their opponent is like scared and it's not running them, then we have plays. But I do think from my time playing this deck, it's kind of on your opponent to mess up. And in this game, our opponent, like for what it's worth, I think did misplay a fair bit. Took some really, really, really risky lines that were riskier than they needed to be, especially on turn one. Um, but it, it paid out, right? Like that sort of aggression that run last click totally worked out. So, hey, what can you say? But that's what I've been finding out for this deck is that it has some cool tools. You can make some really fun board states, but I feel like your opponent really has to cheese it into some bad stuff. 
but that's it. Still quite fun. Let me know what you think. Let me know your version. I think economy is a huge problem. Maybe we can take out some more assets, play some more econ in, but I don't know what econ that econ is. That's kind of been a problem. Anywho, thanks for watching.